Hi, this is a NY4G and tonight we are going to review the TR35 um, CW transceiver. It's a four band transceiver that covers the 40 meter band, the 30 meter band, 20 meter band and the 17 meter band. And we will start by turning the thing on. Uh, the front panel controls, the, the, the red toggle switch is the on and off switch. This is the receiver mode and you can toggle between narrow CW and wide CW. Narrow is uh, 700 hertz wide. And uh, this is the band switch and you can each push of the switch goes to the next band. That's the 30 meter band, the 20 meter band, and the 17 meter band. And pressing it again will uh, we'll bring it back to the 40 meter band. Pushing the, the toggle down activates the receiver incremental tuning, and then you can use the encoder. To change your well, there we go, and then toggling it back down again turns it off. And this uh, button here is the keyer speed, and you can change the you can see the word per minute there. And this is the transmit power. Uh, the, some, the one thing that's unique about this uh, transceiver is that you can dial the power down from maximum down to um, a minimum of. Uh, I can. Uh, I've even dialed it down to uh, 50 milliwatts uh, by using this uh, TX power knob. And this is the RF gain knob, and this is the the volume controlled AF gain knob. And this is the optical encoder. And uh, pushing the encoder in will change the field to uh, change the speed at which it uh, tunes the the transceiver doing a hold will go fast you can go in one one kilohertz steps and you can you can go very quickly i've set the one of the uh, potentiometers for the power uh, it's uh it's R40 um, on the lower. There are two boards inside this transceiver. And I set it so that I can get 4 watts out on 17 meters. And you get more power on the lower bands. And uh, I'm connected to a dummy load. And connected to the speaker. So you can hear the audio. The audio is rather loud. Uh, and I have it connected to this uh, QRP power meter. And right now it's in the TX, it's in the middle position. And it has two jacks, one for straight key and the other is for a paddle. So if I touch my paddle here, but it's in straight key mode. I can get almost 7 watts out on, uh, on 40 meters. And I can dial that power down by turning this knob.
with the voltage set at 13.7 volts using my power supply, I get 7 watts on 40 meters, 7 watts on 30 meters, 6 watts on 20 meters, and 4 watts on 17 meters. If I dial my power supply down, I have an adjustable power supply at 12 volts, I still get um, uh, 12 volts, I get 5.5 watts on 40 meters. And at 11 volts, I get um, 5 watts on, on 40 meters. So you can see that the relationship between voltage and power is uh, proportional. So typically in the field, if you're deploying this in the field, you'll probably only have 12 and a half volts at your disposal. So you, you're only going to get about six watts, which, which is plenty. Six watts is plenty. Another unique thing about this transceiver is that if the voltage, supply voltage drops below 11 volts, uh, this light here will start blinking. And uh, I can I can demonstrate that by turning down my my supply voltage. Yep, I dropped it down to about 12, uh, 11. Point five or so, it, it starts to... Uh... So I built this myself, and the instructions are excellent, uh, very excellent instructions. Uh, the parts supplied are very organized. They're all packaged individually in this plastic, in these plastic pouches that are strung together in the order of the installation. So you'd really have to try hard to make a mistake. Um, and not being careful, I did make one mistake. I put a capacitor in the wrong place, so I had to replace it. Um, I had to desolder that capacitor and uh, buy a new one uh, from one of the local electronic shop. But as far as I know, everything is working fine. Um, the setup uh, went without a hitch. Um, and the diagnostics went without a hitch and um, this transceiver is ready to to deploy in the field or stay in the shack as a great um, milliwatt rig for doing uh, miles per watt or kilo kilo miles per watt uh, contests like a uh, milliwatt sprint from the NAQCC and another nice thing about it is uh, if you have a straight key you don't have to fiddle with a uh, with a control all you have to do is plug in a straight key to the straight key jack or if you're doing a paddle uh, you can plug in the paddle to a uh, to the paddle jack Weight-wise, it weighs 315 grams, so it's less than a pound for sure, and it's comparable in weight to a uh, an LNR MTR4B. For comparison, here's an LNR4B, and it weighs 274 grams with my uh, very miniature paddle there, right, right on top. So it probably weighs this weighs almost nothing so it probably weighs bare bones about 265 grams uh, total I'm not gonna bother unscrewing this uh, aluminum angle and uh, and see how much that contributes to the weight but it's not much so the the TR35 is heavier by a few grams um, about 30 grams or so, maybe 40 grams. 
but it still both still fit into my Pelican 1060 case, which is this one. And of course, the case weighs uh, uh, about another 300 grams or so. So the weight is now a total of 737 grams. So it's over a pound and a half. Um, and using the LNR, it'll be that much lighter, but not by much. Well, here's the LNR. MTR-4B mountain topper, and it is a simpler, simpler radio. Um, there are no knobs. One thing that um, you can do with it to have be uh, a little bit more frequency agile is you can you can uh, put in your frequency using Morse code um, instead of using the dial because using these uh, up and down keys will take forever sometimes. Uh, so instead of let me demonstrate that uh, let's say I want to go to 7105 I can go um, I can reject it because I put in the wrong first letter and then I can load that frequency and so now we have 7105 so that's the substitute for uh, having a rotary encoder is you can put in your frequencies by Morse code. Um, the other advantage of the LNR is that it has a, uh, a built-in SWR bridge. So if you go into straight key mode, um, you get the SWR and you can compare that SWR and power output. You get both SWR and power. So you put 4.2 watts on uh, on the display, and and you get about the same thing. Uh, it's a pretty accurate power meter on uh, on the LNR. Um, it doesn't put out as as much power on 40 meters as the TR-35. TR-35 beats it by about, well, this is only running 12, 12 volts, so it beats it by about two watts uh, for sure. Um, I think the TR-35 puts out close to uh, six watts one with a 12, 12 volt supply. Um, of course, uh, setting up the bands, you have to toggle all three switches so that they all line up 80 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, and 20 meters. Um, whereas on the TR-35, you just toggle the, the switches and you can jump from band to band using, a, using the toggle switch. So let's see how or what this receiver sounds like. We'll tune around and see if we can find a signal that we can copy.
blue light is an indication of signal strength. So the brighter it is, the, the stronger the signal. There's the RIT. Which is a really nice thing to have, to be handy like that. One of the things this uh, transceiver can do is go into single sideband mode and it'll be lower sideband on 40 meters and uh, upper sideband on 20 meters and 70 meters. How you engage this single sideband mode is a long press on this toggle. Now that's CW wide, CW narrow. And then a long press will get you the single sideband mode. Something a tree, vertical like a trapezoid, a big triangle up in a tree. The points up in a tree flat on the bottom. This is the record function. I just recorded a uh, CW message. And I can play by pressing the dit, I can play. Um, Number one, uh, I, there are two memories. Um, I can play the, the one in the number one memory. Well, there you go. That is the TR-35. I hope that was a good review. And if you have any questions, post it in the comments below, and I will try to answer it as best as I can. Thank you for watching.